Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is Maria Brengelmeyer with Youth Power Learning. Uh, welcome to our webinar on unpacking career centers. Uh, we have a packed agenda. Um, so just some very quick introductions for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Youth Power Learning. And actually, today's webinar is uh, organized jointly with the uh, Workforce Connections. Uh, and so you'll hear uh, some of their uh, team later on. Um, so just briefly, Youth Power Learning is a five-year USAID-funded project that focuses on positive youth development. And positive youth development um, means that uh, we focus on or we focus on programs that um, prioritize uh, youth asset, uh, build their agency, uh, increase their ability to contribute to positive change for themselves and also surround them with an enabling environment that, that uh, supports them. Um, and uh, how you can also join activities at uh, Youth Power Learning is uh, that you can share resources. Uh, we are sharing them all out on youthpower.org. And on the last slide, you'll see the email on how to contribute some of the things. Uh, you can identify what works in your programs and share them with us. And, and we'll share them through either communities of practice or the website. You can contribute to the learning agenda. And uh, there is a great tool about uh, the uh, indicators for measuring positive youth development. Uh, so uh, we're always very interested when people are using them and then sharing kind of their uh, stories, learnings uh, with us. So please do that. And then uh, we have four communities of practice, Youth and Peace and Security, Gender and UID, Youth Engagement, and the Cross-Sectoral Skills for Youth. And that is the one that uh, is organizing today's webinar. So the cross-sectoral skills for youth community of practice focuses on identifying, defining, and measuring skills, which are intangible, applicable across fields and contexts, and intrinsically valuable to positive youth development. Sometimes they're also referred to as soft skills, um, sometimes as 21st century skills. Uh, and you can see the co-champions, Nancy Taggart, Olga uh, Merchant, and Hilary Proctor, uh, who are also on the call today. So with that, let me hand it over to you. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Grace Lang. I am the team lead for uh, higher education and youth workforce development in USA Washington's Office of Education. I'm happy that you've all been able to join us today for this webinar to talk about career centers in two countries, Morocco and Egypt. Um, I'd like to thank Maria for her good introduction about what Youth Power is about and what Youth Power Learning is accomplishing. This webinar is also <clears throat> being done in conjunction with another USA Washington funded activity um, implemented by FHI 360 called Workforce Connections. Workforce Connections was a pre is a precursor activity to, to youth power and has helped us advance the evidence base in what works in youth employment and has also been a very good partner to USAID in training and developing in training staff and practitioners and in developing um, tools to help with activity and project design, such as labor market assessments um, and, other, and, 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 other, and other knowledge products. Um, I'd like to give an overview today of how we're going to proceed with this webinar. Um, at first, I'd like everyone, um, just as a, a matter of um, a protocol, to mute your mics when you're not talking. Um, so that we can eliminate background noise and feedback so that everyone can, can hear the presentation. Today we have two presentations, one from Morocco, one from Egypt, on their experiences with career centers. Um, I'll first let our speakers introduce themselves very briefly. Then we will go into the presentation from Morocco. After that 15-minute presentation, I will take five minutes for clarification questions only. Then we will move into the presentation from Egypt. 
Again, after that, I'll, we'll take a few minutes for clarification questions, just to make sure everyone understands. And then we'll launch into a discussion. And um, as you're as you're listening to the presentations, if there are questions you want, please you know, please write them down, and then I will I will uh, at a certain point ask you to type in your questions, so that then we can launch the discussion. Um, so I'd like to first um, allow our panelists here sitting here in Washington to introduce themselves. I'll start with Nadia Amrani. Good morning, all. Nadia Amrani from USAID Morocco Development Specialist and Gender Advisor. Hello, I'm Alexandra Barraforge, and I'm the Chief of Party for the USAID County Center Program in Morocco. Can our colleagues from Egypt introduce themselves? Okay, um, I'm Wafa El Adawi, I'm Project Management Specialist at the Office of Education and Health, uh, USAID Egypt. And we also have Maha. I'm Maha Fahri. Please go ahead. Uh, Maha Fahri, Chief of Party for the UCCD project. Uh, and I'm actually call, uh, joining from Upper Egypt now. Our presenters are from all over the, in all over the region. OK, so I'd like to um, just allow Nadia who's going to start the presentation from Morocco. Um, I'll pass the mic to her. The slides are up on the slide deck now. We're starting with slide five. OK. Uh, I want to just start by uh, uh, saying that uh, there is a video that uh, uh, you can uh, watch later on. It's a four minutes, and it presents the Career Center, the City Morocco Career Center, with all the results up to, uh, up to date. And I would like to uh, provide some context that you have on the presentation is that uh, this program came actually to uh, support the Moroccan efforts to uh, address the uh, employability issue because uh, the um, Moroccan uh, youth uh, who represent actually the third of the population uh, 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 and they represent 80% of the employees. Uh, uh, ironically, uh, the most youth are uh, educated, the less are likely to find a, a job. Uh, many of them, they are lacking uh, communication skills uh, to effectively uh, uh, communicate with the employers and find a job and uh, retain it. Uh, at the same time, the private sector uh, complains about the skill shortage uh, and mismatch, especially regarding soft skills and, uh, and uh, work readiness. So this, is, this program is a five-year program. Uh, it was for four years with a... a, a an option year that is being exercised because the, the, the project is, uh, is uh, uh, achieving its results. So it's, it was good to, to add this uh, year actually to, uh, to, to, to ensure the sustainability. Uh, it's implemented with the, the, the Ministry of Higher Education, Education and uh, uh, Vocation and Training uh, Ministry. Uh, the implementing partners are FHA 360 with the three subcontractors, uh, IREX, AFI and the local uh, 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 Moroccan organization, which helped us also to, to build the capacity of the local uh, uh, expertise. Uh, the planned budget is $24 million. Uh, so this, the objective of this program is to, to, to support uh, uh, graduates and recent, uh, students and recent graduates in the transition from education to employment. Uh, and uh, it's done um, uh, uh, through creating a, a sustainable career center model for the Moroccan public universities and vocational training school, uh, and uh, through integration of the work uh, readiness and soft skills into the Moroccan tertiary uh, education system. Uh, it's piloted in three regions, uh, Marrakech, uh, Casablanca, and Tangier. Uh, and each, in each region, one, one uh, career center is located with, uh, with the university and the other with the uh, uh, vocational training school. Um, and uh, the, the version actually that we selected were, uh, 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 it was done by, by the, uh, on qualitative and quantitative indicators. We selected regions where uh, the, 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 the total dynamic uh, local economies, employment opportunities, and emerging industries. Uh, and um, in parallel to the six physical career centers, we developed a virtual career center because the Moroccan system, university system, the average, actually, uh, population by, by university is 80,000 students. 
So we, are, we were conscious that uh, a science center by university won't be actually uh, sufficient to serve all the, the, the math. This is why we created the platform to bring the services closer to the, to the user. And the, the approach we adopted uh, in this, this program is a systemic approach where we brought actually all the labor market uh, actors to help uh, uh, youth to acquire the skills they need to successfully obtain a job and retain it. And I'll uh, let uh, Alexander. So the, the carry center model um, um, has uh, relies on one carry center director in Morocco, two carry counselors per carry center, one business developer per region, and a network of youth ambassadors. In terms of carry center services that the carry centers offer, we have four families of services. Uh, first, what we call Know Yourself, uh, to help youth and know who they are, what they want, with skills assessment, um, diagnostic tools. The second category of services to help is really orientation services to help you explore career paths, possible jobs, opportunities, um, inform them on key growing sectors. The third category of services is really more about training. We call that prepare yourself. And the, the offering is either through um, short workshops or three to five day intensive trainings on job search skills and soft skills. And the last category of services that the carry centers offer are to connect you with the private sector through guest speakers, uh, company visits, business challenges, um, and of course through the sourcing of uh, potential candidates for open jobs and internships. Um, and all these services um, that are offered in the physical carry centers are also offered online on carrycenter.ma. Um, just a, a couple of results to date. We have exceeded our initial target of 100,000 youth beneficiaries by the end of the program. We have now more than 125,000 beneficiaries in the physical and the virtual carry centers, um, including 27,000 uh, youth who benefited from face-to-face -face work readiness training, and um, almost 50,000 youth actually registered users on the virtual carry center. Um, just uh, one word um, on how we engage youth in, in the carry center program in Morocco. So really, the, the idea is to deliver high-quality services that match Youth um, that match youth demand, um, and we noticed that the, the 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 services that attract that are the most popular with youth are usually services with employers, activities with employers. Um, we engage youth to, um, with peer-to-peer -peer outreach through a network of more than 200 youth ambassadors, and we extensively use social media. Um, all centers have their own Facebook and LinkedIn pages to interact with you. So I'll, we'll get into private sector engagement. I don't know, that's not the right slide. Oh, no, yeah, there. Yeah, but anyway. Mm -hmm. This is ours. OK, all right. So, <laughs> so in terms of private sector, uh, it's just that this program is full use, but also it's a response to the needs of the private sector, because actually, uh, 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 it's an, uh, a factor of uh, uh, labor uh, skill. Uh, skilled labor is a, a, fac a factor of competitiveness. So the private sector is part of the DNA of the career centers. So it's uh, it's uh, an integral part of the design of all offerings uh, and activities uh, uh, in the career center. Uh, we work with a wide variety of partners to expose youth to a wide range of uh, industries, but also to, to a wider uh, type of jobs. Uh, it's, impo uh, 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 important, uh, uh, it's important actually uh, uh, to uh, uh, engage the private sector uh, through a, a strong uh, uh, outreach as it enables sharing information with youth and the faculties about the needs of the job market, uh, co-organizing also activities with uh, uh, in-kind uh, contribution from the private sector. Uh, and doing sourcing uh, activities by preselecting uh, uh, qualified uh, applicants uh, by career center for the inter for uh, interviews and for jobs uh, uh, and internships uh, with the private sector. So, in terms of key uh, lessons learned uh, in private sector engagement, um, it's very important to build trust with partners and to have a progressive approach that I can get back to later. 
Um, we noticed that there are advantages of starting work with big companies over small and medium-sized companies because they have larger hiring needs. Uh, they are with and they have more structured HR departments. And we noticed that there is a multiplier effect. Small companies tend to follow practices of larger companies, either in the same sector or when they are competitors as well. Um, we have also the permanent concern of showing partners how they can benefit from working with the carry centers with a win-win approach. Um, and I know we have we are short in time, so I'm not going to detail the progressive approach um, so that we can talk about sustainability. Um, so, yeah. So just in terms of uh, host country engagement, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we've done from the beginning as we designed the the program to work with the Ministry of uh, Higher Education and Education. Uh, they are involved in the implementation, evaluation, and adaptation uh, uh, throughout the implementation of the program using a CLA approach. Uh, we uh, also try to provide a model or uh, so career center must have a, a strong uh, track record to demonstrate success to the partners and gain their support for sustainability. Uh, so you, we are using a, a proof of, of, of concept approach. Uh, so we need to... Um, to have clear, uh, we are having uh, clear indicators actually to demonstrate success. Uh, we also uh, uh, have a, a strong uh, strategy, communication strategy and campaign to raise the awareness of the service center impact and to raise support for uh, for uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, we we do continuous engagement of the partners uh, uh, through developing a sense of uh, ownership by both institution and also the the need for sustained engaged. Uh, engagement with public partners to gain sustainability-related uh, commitments. And this is at the highest level when we actually to try to engage the, the minister uh, at the ministry himself. So uh, the HR dimension with skilled and motivated staff is also critical to sustaining the carry centers. We have the challenge of sustaining six university carry centers, carry council positions, and three regional business developer positions. Um, but Providing them with quality continuous training and establishing a culture of self-improvement among staff is also critical. We are working with our partners, in particular the University of Casablanca, in institutionalizing the carry counselor position with the creation of a degree um, for carry counselors in Morocco. Um, the, it's important also to prepare uh, partners in advance to manage and finance the carry centers for them to integrate the carry center into the host institution ecosystem, to transfer the capacity to host institutions to be able to monitor the carry center performance, set annual goals and targets, do strategic planning with them, support continuous training. Um, and central management needs to take over, um, over shared resources like the virtual carry center or the carry center uh, management tool that we uh, developed for, for carry centers. Um, uh, host institutions in Morocco committed to funding uh, pilot carry centers, but we are helping carry center staff to identify possible alternative funding resources. Um, funding sources with the private sector and we're training them on budgeting. Um, uh, the program is also developing a, what we call the carry center toolkit um, to support sustainability and dissemination. It's a kit, it's going to be a kit and a website that will help any institution to create their own carry center from A to Z, including space improvement, recruitment and training of staff, outreach, private sector mobilization, and all content training. So. Um, we had a question about scaling the carry center model as well. OK, for scale up, there is one, not one size that fits all. So there are different models. So the external growth, because I mean, this program actually in the contract is only creating six physical carry centers. But we start seeing actually interest from uh, many partners. So we are supporting uh, establishing carry centers in other institutions, uh, supporting uh, one of other, um, our main uh, actually partners, the uh, vocational training system, to open additional centers and also uh, supporting the University of Mohammed Fitch in Rabat actually to open the, the carry center. Uh, internally, internal growth uh, is through expanding the staff uh, and the resources for existing carry center, and it starts happening actually, for example, in Marrakesh, which is a, a, a great case, where now they have more staff, two, two additional staff, which actually they, they are able to serve more youth. 
uh, and also some universities are establishing uh, satellites. This is the, the, the way uh, universities in Morocco are structured. Is the university with uh, with uh, 12 or uh, 15 uh, uh, schools? So they they, ha they are creating satellites in every in every uh, uh, school. Uh, so uh, we are do doing also the the skill to uh, adapting the services services uh, by integrating the soft skills training in curricula of uh, masters at, uh, at two of the pilot universities and also in the curricula of the vocational training system. I don't want to go too much in detail because we don't have time, but we can respond to your questions at the end. Uh, in terms of the virtual career center, uh, we are integrating actually different existing platforms of learning, uh, and but also we are creating new, new uh, more interactive platforms based on the needs of the private sector and, uh, and the youth. Uh, and the career center is a platform building on existing initiatives that are of quality and not is not recreating actually uh, the, the way it's, it's really like a one-stop shop for students because they are lost. They always try to, to find the information while through Kelly Center, it's like an uh, entry point to, to their parent services of quality. The ones that we created ourselves and the ones actually that already exist. Okay, and we just finally wanted to share with you a couple of preliminary lessons that we learned from um, uh, scaling. The essential challenge is, of course, to on how to ensure and maintain quality while we increase the number of kids we service. Um, and it's for that, it's important to transfer the capacity to the partners to scale, the capacity to recruit um, and train qualified human resources. And it's not just about doing more, but also doing differently. Mm -hmm. um, we adapted the delivery of our training but by doing a lot of QT so that soft skills uh, training could be integrated into curricula and delivered by professors from host institutions. We actually developed not one, but actually three pilot models to accommodate the constraints of different partners, um, the university level and two types of partners in the vocation training system in Morocco. Of course, using technology um, um, is, is important for a wider impact, uh, and uh, it, 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 um, it includes the continued development of the virtual career center and an, emphas an emphasis on e-learning. Um, scaling um, uh, needs to be advoc advocated for also early on in the process with partners while we demonstrate the model. And we need to adapt the model to, to their constraints and their pace as well. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's it for us for the moment. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, uh, Nadia and Alexandra, for this very interesting presentation. Um, just a few remarks. One is that I think this activity has a very strong adherence to the positive youth development principles that Maria was talking about at the beginning. Um, it works from the perspective of young people. It uses communication channels that they use. There's peer-to-peer. -peer. There's a lot of hi highly responsive to young people's needs and desires and is constantly able to adapt to those. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge, before we move on to the Egypt presentation, that we received a few questions. We won't answer them now, but I'd like to acknowledge them. Um, first of all, there were some, some questions about the challenges of working with ministries of higher education, which I think perhaps both Egypt and Morocco will be able to discuss at the end. Um, there are questions about employment rates um, and tracking job placements. And then, um, and, and a little bit more discussion about the age, uh, the age group that you're targeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, thank you for for those who submitted those questions. We will get to them at the end. I'd like to turn the mic now over to our team in Egypt. Zwafa, could you get started? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, I just want to. Um, Tell you in just a, a couple of minutes about the situation of the young people and their unemployment rate, which is in Egypt around 12% with unemployment for the young people. Um, in Egypt, uh, the public universities does not have doesn't have the concept of career centers. So in 2012, uh, USAID Egypt, the Office of Education and Health. We supported the establishment of career development centers at public universities in Egypt. Um, we wanted to equip the students with the right skills uh, to equip them for the job market. 
Um, we had a pilot project that started in uh, 2012, which um, uh, our uh, implanting partners and our colleagues uh, were going to talk about it after I finish about the pilot project. And the pilot project started with three centers uh, in the uh, public universities in, in, uh, in Egypt. And then when we found the, the success and the beneficiaries and actually the uh, the, the request that comes from other universities, public universities, we started to scale up and now currently we are having the new project which my colleague, another Maha Fakhli, will, will talk about the current project. So uh, I would like now to um, give the floor to uh, Maha Gindi to tell us more about the pilot project and then uh, Maha Fakhli will tell us about the current project which is uh, the, the scaled one, which including around 20 centers in all over Egypt. Thank you. Hello, can we have the next slide, please? Um, and the pilot project uh, was uh, named Employability and Career Development Center, and um, basically it started in uh, 2012 for five years. And Hi, uh, this is Maria. Uh, we can't hear you. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Is this better? Is this any better? It's a little bit better, but uh, you can speak still louder, please. Sure. Okay, the pilot, the pilot project was implemented... Can you go closer to the microphone? Yes, I am. Okay. The pilot project was piloted in two Egyptian universities, um, Suez Canal University and Ain Shams University. And basically, um, it, it, it started with um, the hiring of uh, the staff. And can you hear me like this? Can, can you hear me? It's very low, but we can hear you faintly. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll check with my colleague, Maha Fasri, if she can, uh, her voice is better, she can cover that. Hi, can you hear me from, from uh, better? Any better? Oh, yes, much better. Okay. Uh, basically, the, the, the pilot project started in 2012, and it lasted for four years uh, with uh, two universities, uh, Ain Shamsi University, where we had two centers, one in the Faculty of Engineering and the other in the main campus, and the Suez Canal University, where we had another center. And uh, the, the project lasted for actually uh, four years and uh, served over 40,000 uh, youth in those universities. Uh, the project included uh, a set of employability skills around. Uh, it was an eight-day program that started with self-assessment, the uh, required soft skills in the market, like critical thinking, team building, leadership, and so forth, in an experiential format. Uh, the core services, of course, were career planning services with the self-assessment part, uh, understanding themselves, getting to know uh, what, they, uh, uh, what they are good at, uh, what they enjoy doing, their value system, and so forth. And then working with them to develop their resumes, uh, their how to go through job interviews, and, uh, uh, and all the set of career planning services while integrating the centers with uh, 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 the industry um, uh, so that they partner with them and secure internship opportunities and job opportunities from the market. The staff uh, got training to become career development facilitators uh, and uh, they, they got an intensive uh, coaching program on how to approach uh, the industry, uh, uh, find a niche in the university and promote it and engage the industry with them uh, and, and all the sets of, uh, uh, of interaction and engagement uh, including uh, having um, an employer partner program uh, and uh, extending their visits to the industry uh, and collaborating with them whether to come on campus and offer technical training or engage them in other career talks or employment fairs and so forth. The project ended uh, in 2017. The centers are still up and running uh, and sustained by the universities. Uh, 
And actually, uh, with the new project, we're, we're scaling up this model. Uh, when we, we used to do surveys to assess the impact of the employability skills and services offered to the uh, students at the centers, and uh, the overall uh, percentage of employment was 85 percent uh, of those who were served by the center uh, received successful employment between six to 12 months after graduation. Uh, after the project ended, uh, we scaled up this model. Uh, and currently, the new project, the, the University Centers for Career Development, the UCCD, uh, is working on um, having 20 sustainable uh, state-of-art centers uh, as integral part of 12 uh, Egyptian public universities. Uh, the project aims at serving over uh, 120,000 students with um, the ability skills programs, technical tracks, and so forth, uh, intensive programs of 16 hours plus while offering career services to over 1 million students across the 12 universities. Uh, actually, we, we launched two of those centers um, on 15th and 16th of July. Uh, the Minya University was launched on the 15th, and the Venice Swift University was launched on the 16th of July, so they are pretty uh, new. Uh, the rest of the 20 are coming uh, in line. Uh, over the coming uh, months. Uh, the services offered by these centers uh, cover a wide range of career guidance, uh, mainly individual advising, uh, resume critique, mock interviews, and the generic sessions of uh, career development workshops uh, that cover career planning, resume writing, interviewing, and job search. And then we have the skill development uh, tracks uh, with the employability skills, which is core uh, to the program, uh, English language courses, technical tracks uh, for specialized training, uh, business ethics, financial inclusion, and personal economics, uh, and with strong emphasis this time on entrepreneurship. Uh, because we're working in governorates, and in some governorates, uh, the industry is not as strong. Uh, so uh, we're encouraging youth who have new ideas and they have the potential to become entrepreneurs uh, to uh, scale up their ideas and pitch them up and uh, secure funding and work on that. With the Career Opportunities part, we actually partner with employers and they are core to the success of the centers because they are the voice of what the industry needs. And um, we have uh, uh, employer advisory council that work with the universities and the board of directors of the centers and the staff there. Uh, and also, uh, we're doing uh, labor market studies with our partner, the ILO, on that project to understand the needs of the market in these governorates and translate them into uh, opportunities uh, for technical trainings and incubated skills, and then working with the universities to adjust parts of, of the academic part uh, to suit what's needed out there. Uh, what's different from the uh, what's different from the uh, old project actually, or the pilot project, as we say, is that now the staff uh, are not newly hired from outside the universities; rather, they are employees from within the universities who are being transferred to the headcount of the new center. And these employees are actually being trained to become career development facilitators, uh, to understand uh, the needs of the labor market, uh, and to, uh, to be able to uh, actually translate this to the universities and integrate them. Uh, also, uh, the, the core of the centers uh, is, is basic um, in terms of what, what they connect the university with. So the universities are looking at the centers as their, uh, they are opener for the industry out there. And they are part of the university's uh, accreditation process. Lots of universities now are looking for accreditations, and one of the main concerns is to have 
career education as part of the criteria. So they are actually keen to keep the centers, maintain them, uh, empower them, and make uh, and help them make a difference in student life. Uh, because they act as uh, 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 they bridge this gap between what's needed out there and what the academia teaches. So uh, they supplement the uh, academic part with the skills that employers look for, and this is uh, generated from the labor market studies that are being done. Uh, let me take you through, uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer any of them uh, after we finish the, the, the rest of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Wafa and the team from Egypt. So everyone, um, we're going to launch into a 20 minute. We have 20 minutes for questions and answers. Um, just a reminder to please mute your mics if you had turned them on and fire. Um, so we have a few clarification questions for the Morocco team and for the Egypt team. Um, the first clarification question, I believe, is for Egypt. And that is that one of our one of our participants would like for you to talk about the percentage of students that obtain employment within six months and one year of leaving the centers. Um, I think that the participant would like you to repeat that percentage. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, what we do is we run a survey uh, every year for the ones who graduated a year before. So if we're talking. 2018, we run, those graduated in 2018, we run, for example, the same day in 2019. Uh, and when we do that, we send to those who actually benefited from uh, uh, the, the, the trainings we offered in the center. And the overall percentage we got across the four years of the program was 85% successful employment within six, to one year, six months to one year. Clarify, it's 85% of the students that you're following received uh, obtained employment within six six months of leaving the centers. Yes, six months to a year from graduation. Thank you, six months to one year. Marco, do you have similar information from your career center? Actually, we don't we don't track actually placement because it's an employability program, not an employment program because we don't control the jobs on the other end because we don't work on the business environment. But we happen actually to track uh, the, 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 the use that they, they have been placed thanks to the activities, uh, the services they use at Career Center. And uh, I don't know if we have a percentage. Uh, no, we don't necessarily have a percentage. What we do is that with employers that recruit uh, um, youth that benefited from the Career Center, we track uh, actually employer satisfaction and what these youth do. And uh, what we see is great satisfaction from employers. And they basically tell us through the survey that we conduct with them that they are very satisfied and that they see um, a big difference between those youth and other youth that didn't benefit from Career Center services. Thank you. And then another clarification question for Morocco. Um, one participant wanted you to please go over the staffing structure again of the of the centers. Sure. So in the model that we adopted, we it's very basic. Basic. Um, we started with one carry center director, uh, two carry counselors, pair carry center, and we have two carry centers per region in Morocco. So we have also a regional business developer that do employer outreach for the, the two carry centers. Um, and uh, the resources, the human resources of the carry center rely a lot on youth themselves. We mentioned the peer-to-peer -peer approach with youth ambassadors. That's the basic, I would say, structure. And some of our partners have started to add upon resources, as, Ma as Nadia mentioned. In Marrakesh, we have a deputy director that was appointed by the university. They recently appointed a new carry counselor um, uh, in Casablanca. While they, they, they are opening their new satellites in uh, other campuses, they are dedicating more resources. So we started small to be able to, to grow, prove the model, and grow. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, 
Uh, there's one question that has come in from both Egypt. I think that's for applicable Egypt. for both Egypt and Morocco. And that is, um, what challenges have you faced in working with the Ministry of Higher Education? And I just want to clarify that in Morocco, the career centers also work with other ministries, the Ministry of, of um, no, ministry now, but different departments within the ministry yeah. for technical vocational education, um, for higher for the institutions of higher education uh, that are universities, and then for the ministry other ministry based training programs. Um, so I'd like to first give the mic to Nadia to talk about the Ministry of Higher Education in Morocco. Then we'll pass it to Wafa to talk about Egypt. Uh, and I'll just give a, a bit of uh, context, because when we started the program, we had the two partners. Uh, the ministries were separated, like Ministry of uh, Higher Education and Ministry of Education and Vocational Training. And we had the chance, actually, that the, these two ministries have, have emerged. So we have to deal now with uh, one minister, one ministry. And in the, it's true that they were uh, working in so piped actually, way, like Department of uh, Vocational Training, Department of Education, Department of uh, Higher Education. And the former minister was uh, more in education than higher education and the vocational training. But we had the chance now that we have a new minister that uh, happened to be, to be the, the president of the University of Rabat. So he's more in the, in the three legs uh, under the ministry. So uh, sustainability will be more ensured, actually. Uh, we had challenges at the beginning. But now we are really happy that we have a minister that is on board. He wants to generalize actually the model, even to marginalize the regions in Morocco. And they're uh, very supportive for the vocational training system and also the higher education system. It depends on the leadership. Yeah. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, thank you, Nadia. And, and Wafa, can you talk about the ministry in Egypt? Yeah, I mean, um, the Ministry of Higher Education in Egypt, because all our work got the blessings from the Ministry of Higher Education, so, um, and they are really encouraging the concept of career centers. The challenges is actually not from the Ministry of uh, Higher Education, because they support the concept, but the, the challenges that we face is because each public university has its own administration. So, um, the issue is that if the any changes in the administration of the university, this could be the challenge because we are starting a new concept. So we, we have support from uh, administration while others may not support the idea, but because of the pilot project and they start to see the success uh, of the pilot project, so now we are getting more support from the different uh, administrations of the universities, public universities, and they are the ones who are coming to us to request to have career centers to be established in the universities. So the, 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 after the pilot project, the, the administration has changed a lot because they understood now that there is a lot of beneficiaries in their universities that need such kind of career centers. Thank you very much. It, it just goes to show you when something works really well, so out of mouth gets around and it creates demand, and it's really great to see in, in both countries. Um, I'd like to just switch the, the questioning to um, a question that's come in. Um, could, could you please mute your mic? Um, one question has come in from a, a, a participant on activities and any special services that are provided to women or other vulnerable populations or underrepresented groups in higher education. Um, can I turn the mic to, to Nadia first and then to, to Egypt? Can you please mute your uh, mic? Yeah, just all the services that we develop under the Care Center, we try to have them adapted actually to different uh, Population, like I mean, uh, it's gender balanced. I mean, gender is uh, like I mean, uh, we ha actually in terms of participation, we have 50/50. But also now we started actually uh, uh, adopting a more inclusive approach, where actually we adapt all our services and uh, modules to people with disabilities and with special needs. Hmm. I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, for example, the e-learning platform that we developed for um, soft skills and job search skills training online is adapted for hearing impaired students. Uh, we have uh, equipped uh, carry centers. Uh, 
um, uh, the, 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 the old, um, some computers for visually impaired students with the right um, software for them to be able to do, to search online, etc., and use the virtual career center. Um, we work actually with universities to develop inclusion inside the universities through the career centers. Uh, so it's something that is um, that is very important in the project. Thank you. And Egypt, do you have anything to add on women in vulnerable populations? Uh, I think, uh, Maha, would you like to, to add on, on, uh, on this one? Okay, uh, I, I can add on on this. I mean, because we are trying to have the 50-50% with our um, uh, young people, but it all depends on the number of of young uh, uh, ladies in the universities because some of the faculties like in Egypt faculty of engineering we have more um, uh, males than females but what I want to um, uh, confirm is that in the current project we are giving uh, more um, attention to the students with disabilities and we are creating um, a special trainer uh, in each center in the public university to be able to give um, training to the students with disabilities because they will need um, a special kind of training that might be different from the ones that are given to the other students. Thank you very much. Um, another, another question that's come up is on the question of self-employment or entrepreneurship. Um, could you, uh, the question was basically, um, do you, has self-employment of youth ever been a focus and what kind of support system is in place for promoting self-employment? And I would, I would say self-employment of any kind, not just starting a business, but maybe working in the gig economy or any other, other ways that young people can find work. A word that, uh, actually it was not the focus of the program. But it's, it's, it's becoming like, I mean, a focus because uh, the economy doesn't create enough jobs. So, and uh, we don't want to create frustration by making actually youth more employable and not finding a job. So, uh, if each I360 did a great job developing an uh, entrepreneurship strategy, and they are in, uh, about actually to implement it, they are about to assess actually all the offer in terms of the, the, assess the ecosystem for entrepreneurship and to make the information available to youth actually that uh, uh, want, want actually to start a business or actually to, to be self-employed. But also they are building the capacity of the staff of care center to actually uh, help students when they come actually, voila, and gain, gain, provide the career guidance in terms of entrepreneurship and self-employment. Thank you. And Egypt? Actually, we been with a new project, the UCCD project, we're actually having a special TOT for the career center staff uh, uh, to encourage entrepreneurs and to work with them. Uh, if they are working on a business plan, there is support given in that direction to identify sources of funding uh, uh, and to pitch their ideas to the, uh, to other, uh, to the industry and so forth. Uh, so this component is very strong, especially when we're working with Upper Egypt, because the industry around is, uh, is a little bit limited than Cairo and Alexandria and big cities. And there is a lot of initiative among the students uh, to be self-employed uh, in small staff, uh, create their own uh, standalone businesses and so forth. So encouraging this is pretty important and it's, it's becoming core, uh, a core cornerstone in the project as well. And I'm sorry, I, I was not hearing you in the part of disabilities, but also with the, the new project, the scaling up of the UCCD, uh, we're having a TOT for the for some of the career center staff as well as faculty members on how to deal with people with disabilities uh, uh, and give them hope and encourage them and work with them uh, on identifying their areas of strength and how to capitalize on them and find their niche employment. Uh, and as for the gender balance, um, in some faculties we have more uh, females than males, like for example Faculty of Arts and Alison and so forth, and in others like engineering we have more males than females. But overall the balance is, is there. 
It's either 50-50 or 50-60. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have two questions that are related to engaging with the private sector. Um, I'll read them out and then I'll ask each, each uh, presenter to respond. Um, one quest, the first question is, could you tell us a bit more about how you source from the private sector partnerships for jobs and internships, especially under the Get Started service in Morocco? And then uh, as, a, as an addition to that, can you discuss what you have found helpful in getting employers to give time to interacting with the career centers? And who are the best people in those, in those companies to begin interacting with? <laughs> OK, first Morocco. Sure. So there are several questions in there. I'll try to respond. To get to the sourcing point, um, I would say that it's, uh, it's an objective. To um, engage in the private sector with educational institutions in Morocco is quite new. Um, uh, the private sector has a lot of um, um, reluctance and um, um, I would say prejudice uh, towards the, the, the educational system. So we really have to convince them and build that trust. So we have that progressive approach when we approach them. First, we really need to understand their needs, um, to understand their sector, the needs in terms of skills, of profiles. Then we are slowly introducing them to the career center concept. We invite them to visit the career center, to attend an activity, and it's even better to do so if there is already a private sector representative there, because when they see you appear there, they, and they see the interest. So it's about restarting the relationship. Then we can start um, to plan joint activities. Um, uh, like company visits and guest speakers, etc. And then we get to that point uh, when the, 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 the company is convinced that they can get and win things from, uh, from the carry center and get to the sourcing of activities. And the, the, the key focal point, and that's why we started with big companies, is HR, uh, is HR people. HR departments, sometimes it's just one person in the company, and they usually, and that's also what they're going to be winning from the carry center. It's that we try to share best HR practices. We try to um, make the carry center a platform for them to meet with other HR professionals. Um, and, and, and develop their own expertise. And for them, they, 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 see, they, they start to see the career centers as a way to first get entry-level employees that have um, better soft skills, to uh, get support in their recruitment and save time and money, mm -hmm. uh, to get support in developing their intention programs, for example, and support to uh, get that space to discuss these practices in Asia. And they don't have that many spaces to do so in Morocco. So that's usually very welcome um, uh, by the, the, the employers. I want to just quickly add something to, to, uh, to have uh, a multiplier uh, effect, actually, uh, with the FHI3 did uh, well in, a, in the region of Tangier. It's to work uh, with associations of HR in the free zone of Tangier. So uh, when you start with one company, or with uh, one HR, you have actually uh, all the, the, the companies, uh, part of the organization, actually, that wants actually to work with the career center. OK, Egypt, can you talk to us a little bit about your experience with the private sector, especially with placement and, and what, where, sure. where you start in a particular company? Sure. Private, the, the, the industry in general is poor uh, uh, to the center because engaging them uh, gets the vibe of what's needed out there in the industry and helps us prepare the graduates better through technical trainings and technical tracks. And we actually rely on the private sector and the, and, and the industry on coming on campus and supplementing uh, the technical uh, skills that are needed for certain careers. Uh, so, for example, if there is a certain type of technology that is now uh, needed for uh, construction engineers and there is an industry or a private sector that needs uh, this type of uh, technology, they come on campus, uh, there's like four or five uh, courses on this specific need, and then they take these students and hire them for internships or for employment. So this is one of the engagements we do. Of course, uh, engaging them. Uh, the, the focal point for uh, our contact with the industry as a, pub, a private sector is through alumni, successful alumni working there. 
uh, uh, HR department and uh, general managers of these companies. And sometimes uh, we rely on uh, part of the CSR department in some cases, they like to uh, fund training opportunities for students as part of their uh, community service, social social responsibility initiative. Uh, and, and, and they are uh, also uh, working with us on advisory boards for the university. So uh, they meet like uh, once or twice every year. And uh, they voice out uh, what is needed out there in the industry, what is missing from the student's uh, preparation time, so that uh, we can supplement this and work on availing needed trainings uh, to bridge this gap or this need in the market. Thank you. And so we're just about out of time. Um, please meet your mic. We're just about out of time, but we did have so we did have one question. Um, a, there were a number of people who were interested in seeing the resources that you have available. How do you train career center staff? Um, you know, just any of the resources and training materials you have from your program. How can those be accessed? And um, is it possible, one, one of our participants would like to know, is it possible to come visit yep. your countries and the career centers um, to, to see, to see how, how they function in reality and to, and to interact with the young people who are beneficiaries? Um, just in terms of Sure, with pleasure. Hello? Sure, with pleasure, anytime. Yes? Hi. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. We'll provide information to the participants on how to reach you after after this presentation. Yes, thanks for Morocco. You are welcome. And we had already the the opportunity to have visitors from uh, other countries. The Mauritania mission they came and uh, they were in the process of designing a program, so they are designing the program based on ours. And also we were invited in. Uh, to, um, to uh, 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 Algeria and to Tunisia actually to present the model. So it's, it's been actually uh, uh, looked at. So Matthew, you are very welcome. And in terms of resources, I turn it to my colleague uh, Alexandra Dinsman. Yeah, so um, in terms of resources, um, uh, we will um, we'll, we'll have them all accessible in our toolkit, and it will be on the public website. So that will be um, accessible. and. Um, and but most of those resources will be in French because that's the language that is used by the private sector in the country and to recruit youth and that most of our uh, tools and, um, and resources are in French. So, yes, my friend. Um, yes, uh, yeah, I just want to mention that also, uh, of course, uh, we're well, most welcome, and I would like to encourage uh, the participants if they can um, see on the deck, because we have um, media um, evaluation for the pilot project, which includes a lot of uh, useful information that can benefit them. We've come to the end of our time together today. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't able to, to address all the many, many questions that came in. But um, the, the presentation from Morocco um, that was given today will be available, as well as a longer presentation. It will be sent, it will be posted so that everyone can see some of the information that we weren't able to present today. Um, and then with, if your question was not answered, please feel free to reach out to our presenters to answer, to, to ask those questions, any follow-up questions. Um, I'd like to thank everyone um, for your participation today and encourage you, encourage you to, visit, to visit the youthpower.org website for further information on soft skills research um, and on the communities of practice. Um, that Maria talked about earlier. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.